Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1 Lesson 3 on Dividing Fractions. Now dividing fractions was a brand new topic for you last year in Math 6 and understandably it could be a bit confusing. I mean to think about what one-third divided by two-ninths equals or what it even means but always keep in mind that division is the inverse or the opposite of multiplication, right? We can always think about it in that context. So today we're going to review how to divide two fractions. We're also going to see something called a complex fraction, which is kind of awesome. All right, so let's get right into it right now with division of fractions. All right, exercise number one. Consider the division problem 4 ninths divided by 2 fifteenths. Okay, so letter A asks us to change the quotient into a product using what you learned from last year. Find the final answer in simplest form. Okay, so what a lot of people learn is a mnemonic that basically says, look, when you're going to divide a fraction by another fraction, you keep the first fraction the same, you change the division into multiplication, and then you change the second fraction not into 12, but let's say into 15 halves. A lot of teachers will say keep change chains. Someone will say keep change flip, right, for the fact that you're taking that second fraction and you're flipping it, all right? Keep in mind that 2 fifteenths and 15 halves are what are known as reciprocal fractions. They're as different as different can be, but dividing by 2 fifteenths is the same as multiplying by 15 halves. And now, of course, we've already reviewed how to multiply two fractions. What we can now do is look to do a little cross-canceling to make our lives a little bit easier, right? We could divide 2 by 2 and get 1, divide 4 by 2 and get 2, divide 9 by 3 and get 3, divide 15 by 3 and not get 3, but get 5, all right? And then we just do 2 times 5, which is 10, 3 times 1, which is 3, and we get 10 thirds. We could also rewrite that in mixed number form as 3 and 1 third. Here the directions really don't specify and I actually like to leave it as 10 thirds especially for part B. Part B says check your answer to part A is correct by using another product. Alright, so what does that really mean? Well, we can always check the result of a division problem by doing a multiplication problem and here's what I mean. 4 ninths divided by 2 fifteenths we came up with was 10 thirds. Now we're going to know that's right if we then take 2 fifteenths, we multiply it by 10 thirds, and we get 4 ninths. So let's see if it in fact works out that way. Let's do 10 thirds times 2 fifteenths. And again, I'm going to do some cross cancellation because I can have 5 go into that 15 three times. I can have 5 go into that 10 two times. Then I have 2 times 2, which is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and that checks. That's exactly what I should have had. And again, this is really no different than when we do something like, you know, a real simple example, if I did 28 divided by 4 and I got 7, I could then say, well, let's see, is that right? Well, yeah, sure, because 4 times 7 is 28. Right, again, a very, very simple example. A better example would be if I had some really long number, like 304 divided by 16, and I got 19. Right then, to check, I would do 16 times 19 to make sure I got 304. All right, so we can always use multiplication to check division, and that's particularly helpful in a situation like this, where it's a little bit confusing to even think of what it means to have 4 ninths divided by 2 fifteenths. But <clears throat> keep in mind what we're primarily reviewing in this exercise is that keep change change algorithm. Keep the first fraction the same, change the division into multiplication, and flip that second fraction, change that second fraction to the reciprocal. Let's get a little more practice with this. All right, dividing two fractions, everything we just summarized right there. A divided by D, B, C divided by D represent two fractions, then A over B divided by C over D is A over B times D over C. See, doesn't that make it all more clear? You know, whenever we use letters to represent numbers. Anyway, let's get a little bit of practice here. All right, exercise number two. Find each of the following products in simplest form. Leave improper fractions. Okay, 
So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to do A together, then have you do B and C on your own. Then we're gonna do D together, and then we're gonna have you do E on your own. But let's first, let's do A together, all right? Just like before, I can change 8 sevenths divided by 21 fifths. I can keep the first fraction as 8 sevenths, change to multiplication, and multiply by 5 21sts. Now, when I do that, right, what I find is that there is no cross canceling I have whatsoever. Very tempting to try to cancel the 7 and the 21, but they're both denominators. So what I simply have now is 8 times 5, which is 40, 7 times 21, which is 147. Now, as a little aside, right, we know that this really can't be simplified at all because there was no cross cancellation that could occur here. All right, there will be a lot going on in some of the other problems. So what I want you to do is pause the video now, work through letter B and letter C, and then we'll come back and do them together. All right, let's tackle letter B where there's gonna be cross canceling all over the place. But first, we need to change this division problem into multiplication. Here we go, right? So we're gonna keep that first fraction the same, 18 fifths, we're gonna change the division to multiplication, and then we're gonna rewrite the second one as 10 27ths. Here goes our cross cancellation. We can divide a five into five one time, and five into 10 two times. The 18 and the 27 have nines that go into them. Nine goes into 18 twice, and into 27 three times. And now we have two times two, which is four. One times three is three for a final answer of four-thirds, right? Lots of cross-canceling. Let's tackle letter C together. Let's do it. Again, we're gonna keep that four-ninths the same, change to multiplication, and multiply by three-eighths. Lots of cancellation going on here. Three goes into three one time, three goes into nine three times, four goes into one four times, four goes into eight two times, and the numerator, I then get one times one, which is just one. In the denominator, I have three times two, which is six. One sixth. All right. Now, a little more complicated is letter D and letter E, because in letter D, right, we've got three and one third divided by four and one sixth. So we've got mixed, I'm sorry, we've got mixed numbers. And how does that even work with the, the keep change change, right? Well, what we first have to do is we have to convert the mixed numbers to improper fractions, and then we can change the division to multiplication by the reciprocal. So let's go through letter D together. Bring this to the top of my screen. Three and one thirds can be changed into 10 thirds. Four and one sixth can be changed into 25 sixths. All right, once we've done that, we can now rewrite the problem as 10 thirds times 6 25ths, and we can cross cancel all over the place. Let's divide a five into both the 10 and the 25, and let's divide a three into both the three and the six. We then get two times two, which is four, one times five is five, and our final answer is four fifths. The key here though is that we have to change, right, those mixed numbers into these improper fractions before we can even do the keep change change or the stay change flip or however your teacher wants you to remember it. Why don't you pause the video now and work through letter E on your own. All right, first step, let's convert to an improper fraction, two improper fractions. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about is really how to do that and what I'm always taught students is to take that denominator, 4, multiply it by that whole number, and you get 32. Add the 3, look at all those things circled, and we get 35 fourths. Right? Same thing here. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 5 is 21, and we get 21 eighths. We can now change that division problem into a multiplication problem. And let's look for some cross-canceling. Fours go into both of these two numbers. Sevens go into both of these. So ultimately, we have five times two, which is 10. One times three, which is three. And a final answer of 10 thirds. All right, 
So if we've got those mixed numbers, change them into improper fractions, then do your keep change change, and do the multiplication. All right, let's keep moving on to see some more division of fractions. Complex fractions. As if fractions weren't bad enough, we then invented something called complex fractions. Now, what a complex fraction is, is a fraction that's got another fraction in its numerator, its denominator, or both. So for instance, before we, we even look at the directions, let's just take a look at letter A. Here we've got a fraction that's got 7 thirds in the numerator and 5 sixths in the denominator. You know, So I guess if you were reading it in terms of this over this, this would be 7 thirds over 5 sixths. We want to learn how to simplify complex fractions, and the key there is to remember that all fractions, all fractions, complex or not, have an equivalent representation in terms of division. In other words, in exercise 3 it says, simplify each of the following complex fractions by rewriting as a product and evaluating. Write in simplest form and convert any improper fractions to mixed numbers. So let, let's do this together in letter A, and let's be very clear. This is the same as 7 thirds divided by 5 sixths. So if I now want to simplify that quotient, I'll rewrite it as 7 thirds times 6 fifths. I can do a little cross cancellation there. And now I'll have 7 times 2, which is 14. 1 times 5, which is 5. This problem asks us to convert any improper fractions into mixed numbers. So that would then convert into 2 and 4 fifths, right? 14 divided by 5 is 2 with a remainder of 4. So 2 and 4 fifths. <clears throat> All right. Let's do another one of these together since this is your first time seeing the simplification of complex fractions. Again, Let's think about this. We change the overall fraction into a division problem, then we change that division into a multiplication by the reciprocal, and then we just multiply two fractions together. Let's do letter B together. Again, I want to recognize right away that 25 6 divided by 5 twelfths is the same as writing it this way. I then can keep that first fraction as 25 6 change the division into multiplication by 12 fifths. Let's do some cross canceling. One there, five there, one there, two there. I get five times two, which is 10. One times one, which is one. And we should never leave an answer like 10 over one, right? Never ever leave something like this. What is that, 10 firsts? Do you know what 10 firsts is? It's 10. It's 10 ones, right? I mean, that, that, that's what it is, right? Or you can think about it as 10 divided by 1, which again is just 10. Don't ever leave something like this. It makes people wonder if you know what the number 10 is, right? Pause the video now and do one last problem, letter C, on your own. All right, let's work through it. All right, every step, right? So I've got 4 35ths divided by 7 eighths. I can rewrite that as 4 35ths times 8 sevenths. And in this case, we don't have anything that's going to actually cross cancel. So in the numerator, we've just got 4 times 8, which is 32. And in the denominator, we have 35 times 7, which I actually have to do longhand, right? And that's okay, 7 times 5 is 35, 7 times 3 is 21, 22, 23, 24, 245. So 32, 245 fifths. That's rather ugly, but it's okay. Nothing canceled, right? At this stage, 4 and 7 don't cross cancel, and 8 and 35 don't cross cancel. So when we multiply across, we know we're not gonna be able to reduce that fraction. Okay. So, how do we simplify a complex fraction? Write it as the division problem that it is, keep change change, and then do fraction multiplication. Kind of simple enough. Let's look at an applied version of a complex problem, or a complex fraction problem, that is. Exercise number four. A recipe 
for hot cocoa calls for three quarters of a cup of sugar per batch. Notice that rate, three quarters of a cup per batch. Jayla has four and a half cups of sugar. Write a division problem that shows how many batches of hot cocoa Jayla can make with this much sugar. All right, so for a moment, I want you to pause the video. It shouldn't take very long. I want you to just write down the division problem in letter A. You don't have to actually evaluate it, but write down the division problem that actually gives us how many batches that Jayla can make. All right, so it's simple enough, right? Four and one half divided by three quarters, right? So we know how much is in each group, three quarters of a cup, and what we're kind of looking at is how many groups or batches we can make. So we've got a total of four and a half. We're gonna divide by how many are in each group, three quarters, four and a half divided by three quarters. Letter B asks us to evaluate the quotient to determine the number of batches. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and do this division on your own. All right, let's go through it. First thing I'm gonna do is change that four and a half into its improper form, that's nine halves. I'm gonna change the division into multiplication and change that into four thirds. Let's do some cross canceling. One and three, one and two, and we get three times two is six, one times one is one, and we get six. Again, don't leave it as six over one, because what would that really mean, right? Six batches. Jayla can make exactly six batches using three quarters of a cup of sugar per batch. Now, letter C, the final little piece, check your answer from letter B using a product. Show the units of the product and the final units of your answer. Okay, so this is really cool. Let's actually take a look at this, right? The whole idea here is that we've got six batches times three quarters of a cup per batch. Remember from sixth grade math, right? that per can be thought of in terms of a fraction. So now we want to multiply these two together. Now, we've talked about how to multiply a fraction by a whole number. Here, right, we want to do that maybe by writing six is six over one, right? Now what I can do is I can do six times three and get 18, one times four and get four, right? The batches literally cancel and we're left reducing this to nine halves, which is four and one half cups, right? So we've got our six batches, three quarters of a cup of sugar per batch. It's like the batches cancel out, gives us 18 fourths. We reduce down to nine halves, four and a half cups, a beautiful check, right? Because we know we started with four and a half cups of sugar to begin with. You can always check any division problem by using multiplication. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. So mostly today what we worked on was simply the division algorithm of fractions. Keep that first fraction the same, change the division to multiplication, and then flip that second fraction, right? Take its reciprocal and do the multiplication by that. Multiplying and dividing fractions, those two skills are gonna come up a lot in this course. Here, there, here, there. We're going to wanna to be able to do them at any point in time, okay? Especially in the next lesson when we start to divide some decimals. Yeah, that's right, decimal division, awesome. Anyhow, for now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.